So welcome to Midweek Experiments in Faithfulness. This is a weekly facilitated spiritual practice with a Quaker flavor and an experimental ethos. My name is Jen Higgins Newman, and I'm the program manager here at Beacon Hill Friends House, which is a Quaker center for learning and action and a residential community of about 20 people who live according to Quaker values. And tonight we have Sarah Freeman Wolpert with Finding Our Place in Movements for Social Change. So each of us has an important role to play in the powerful social movements of our time, from addressing the climate crisis to ending endless wars. In this session, we'll use creative approaches to examine Bill Moyer's four rules of social activism as a tool to understand how we can feel most connected, effective, and empowered as we work for social transformation. So now I'm excited to introduce you to Sarah. Sarah Freeman Wolpert is the National Field Organizer at the Friends Committee on National Legislation. She is also a writer and associate editor for Waging Nonviolence, one of the leading online publications about nonviolent social movements, and has worked as a youth facilitator in the US and Bosnia Herzegovina, leading programs on activism and social change. Um, So again, welcome. We're happy that you've joined us. And Sarah, it is all yours. Thanks, Jen. Um, Yeah, and thank you everyone for being here. Uh, Give me a thumbs up if my connection is doing okay. Uh, It's work from home, so you never know what might happen. Um, Okay, so I I am, you know, hoping that we can use this time tonight to do some kind of introspective discussion and, and different kinds of exercises to think about the different roles that we each play in all the movements that we care about. This is a time when um, I think there's a lot of urgency around a lot of different movements um, from the environmental movement and the anti-war movement and all sorts of movements that that we're all probably part of in some way. Um, And one of the reasons that I wanted to do this, although I'm far from being an expert on Bill Moyer's four roles framework or any of this, and probably some of you have have a lot more experience working with this, but um, is that I have seen kind of firsthand through being connected to and tangential to a number of different movements Um, that conflict within movements and kind of uh, guilt about which role we play or feel that we should be playing or we're not sure if we're playing it right, that all of those things can kind of affect our ability to really be authentic and feel fulfilled and show up as our full selves in the different movements that we're a part of. Um, So that's why I wanted to dig into all of this with you and, and I'm excited to get a chance to talk about these roles more and to also hear from each of you um, which roles you play or have played in the past in different movements that you're part of. Um, If you're part of an organization like how I, you know, I work for the Friends Committee on National Legislation um, and, you know, what roles your organization might play and if that's different than your own, um, that kind of thing. So so I'm excited to talk with you all. Um, Just as a little context, I work at FCNL as the national field organizer, like Jen said, but um, I grew up in Concord, New Hampshire in the Concord Friends meeting um, and uh, have been now working for FCNL for about three years. Um, I will, I'm going to share a little bit of my journey story as we, as we go kind of as it relates to the roles, but, um, but I just thought that I would, I would start out with a little bit of introduction about how we can use this time together. So Okay, and Jen, if you can hit the first slide, um, I'm just gonna go through this a little bit. So I don't know how many of you, you can put in the chat if you've heard of this framework. Um, Bill Moyer was a Quaker. He was involved in the civil rights movement and movements for housing justice in the 60s and 70s. Um, I primarily know about his work through a lot of writing that George Lakey has done, who's another Quaker activist. Um, And so I'm glad to see Holly says it's new. So this this is good. There might be a big range here. Um, But this is something that he's developed um, in addition to uh, a lot of other tools about how to map a movement's success, the different stages that social movements go through over time. Um, He's also developed this framework about four different roles that people play or activists play within movements for social change. Um, And he actually named these differently, but George Lakey has kind of renamed and popularized these terms Um, with his permission to help make them a little easier to conceptualize. Um, So I wanted to just kick off by by kind of reading through and and sharing these four roles, which may sound familiar to you. 
So one of these roles is called the helper. This is someone who might provide more direct service to meet a need or remedy an injustice. Um, examples I've heard of this include someone who installs solar panels, someone who provides jobs training, who does ESL classes, maybe someone who provides sanctuary to someone who's at risk of, of deportation or um, somebody who, I think of this also as someone who hands out water at a protest to make sure that everyone's staying hydrated if it's hot, that kind of thing. Um, so somebody who's really there to meet an immediate need by addressing that immediate concern or remedying it. Um, the advocate, if you're familiar with FCNL where I work, I think of primarily as someone who's working with um, those in power, um, people who are uh, elected officials, people who are kind of in a position of authority and trying to work through the formal channel to get those uh, power holders um, to make the right call or to, to implement change through sort of the formal established legal system. Um, trying to figure out a way to compromise with them and to get them to leverage their power while also seeing that that's a way to make a really sweeping change if they pass a certain law, for example, that can have this big structural change. So that's the advocate. The, the rebel is probably like a bunch of our favorite roles here. The rebel we think of as someone who causes a commotion, creates a crisis to try to instigate change or to try to really push the conversation in a more urgent and radical direction than it might have been already. So I think of these as people doing civil disobedience, doing direct actions and marching in the streets and, and a lot of the things that we usually associate image-wise image with social movements and activism. Um, we usually think of the rebels, I think. I do at least, I should say. Um, and then there's the organizer, which is, as I'll explain in a minute, this is the role that I identify with and it took me a long time to figure that out. Um, but this is the person who is most interested in bringing together a lot of different people, building numbers as a way to build power and bringing together people who didn't know each other already to try to kind of create the momentum to show those in power that there's a big surge of energy and popular support and pressure, but primarily through building numbers of, of people in the public who are interested in this or who are, who are taking action together. Um, I often associate the organizer role with really grassroots organizations, especially housing justice groups like in Boston, Vida Urbana is one of the groups I think of as really, you know, on the front lines of organizing around housing justice. Um, and, and they're a group that I look to a lot for tips on organizing. Um, so these are some of the, these are the four roles that Bill Moyer identified as really, um, you know, usually that people within social movements may identify more strongly with one of these roles than with the other. Um, and one thing that he has found both through his own research and I think through a lot of different examples of movements that he was involved with is that um, while there are more, more and less effective ways to play these different roles, uh, all of these roles are needed for a movement to succeed. And so, um, we often see, I think, and I've experienced a lot, that people who play different roles, especially maybe the advocate and the rebel, um, they might get locked into kind of a disagreement or discord about who's most effective, which tactic is going to make the best change, um, is somebody undermining someone else's strategy, and really what Bill Moyer lifted up sorry, my phone is ringing in the back. Um, if what, what he really lifted up and I think is so important um, and has been extremely important to me is that all four roles are needed for a movement to succeed, especially when those roles figure out how they can best complement each other um, and find a way to really live into each person's expertise, each organization's niche, what they bring into that movement and find ways that their work complements each other instead of seeing them as mutually exclusive or thinking that one is more effective or more important than another. Um, and then the last thing that I'll just say is that organizations and groups also play different roles within the movement. So an organization like FCNL, the Friends Committee on National Legislation, um, in within the larger movements that we're part of, FCNL is in the advocate role. So we work on uh, advocacy around federal legislation on Capitol Hill. Um, we as an organization are very firmly within the advocates role. 
But within FCNL, you have helpers, you have advocates, you have rebels, and you have organizers. So it's always really interesting to me to see that even within these organizations that play a specific role, there are individuals who also play their own unique roles. Um, okay, Jen, if you can go to the next slide. This might be a little blurry. Um, so this is, again, with different names because Bill Moyer used different terms to describe these roles. But this is one kind of map that he used to say, here are the most and least effective ways for people to play each of these roles. Um, and I'll just give a couple of examples. So for example, the helper role, which is what he called the citizen, um, can be criticized when ineffective, can be kind of criticized as being naive or just providing you know, a Band-Aid solution to a problem or something like that. Um, they can sort of believe too much in the system to right itself. Um, but they also are, are people who are addressing immediate needs. They're uh, promoting widely held values and their, their approach often resonates with a lot of different people in society. Um, the advocate role or what he called the reformer um, is someone who's using these official channels so they can often make a really big change um, if, if they're able to succeed but they can be criticized as being co-opted or trying to find too moderate of a role to work with those in power because they're trying to work with those in power. Um, they, can, they can kind of be at risk of, of not having this radical vision that they're putting forward because they're trying to find the middle ground, um, for example. Um, and then of course, you know, in the rebel role, I think you often hear both the, the really effective pitch and the really ineffective pitch. So, my dog. Um, so, you know, rebels are, are kind of thought of, I think, by, by some as really um, shifting the conversation, what we call, what has been called the Overton window. So finding a way to really dramatically um, shift the whole political conversation to a much more extreme and maybe even more, much more powerful direction than it ever has been before. Um, but they can also be criticized as being too on the fringe or, or too radical to the point that they really um, inspire a backlash from power holders, for example. Um, sometimes protests are, uh, you know, criticized for as being violent. Sometimes they're they're seen as, you know, angry or something. And and this can, depending on how those activists navigate it, can be really effective in pushing the conversation and can also be be challenged as being ineffective. Um, and then the last role here, change agent, is what Bill Moyer called the organizer role. Um, it you know, has been criticized as being utopian or being too dogmatic um, for organizers who are trying to bring a lot of different people together, but they can also slip into the role of wanting to take over too much power, for example, in the movement. Um, but on the other hand, this is the role that's really lifting up a huge grassroots perspective, bringing a lot of people together um, and, and really building numbers, which, which can have a huge influence on policymakers. Um, so this is my little personal personal slide. I've never done a presentation where I talked about this any of this before. So this is all just um, something I've been thinking about leading up to this midweek. Um, one of the reasons this is really important to me um, and, and may resonate with some of you is that over the past 10 to 12 years, I've been on a bit of a journey trying to figure out what role I'm really meant to play in the different social movements that I care about and, and that I want to be part of and want to contribute to. Um, I started out in this, this journey right after I finished high school, which was in 2010. Um, and I went to live in Nepal for a couple of months with this woman who's in the top left corner. Her name is Pushpa Basnet. Um, and she is a helper. She's the epitome of a helper. And I decided that that was also my role. And I was you know, became really devoted to this organization that she works with, um, which helps children whose mothers are in prison and the children are also uh, in prison with their moms because there's no one else to take care of them. Um, long story short, but I really threw myself into supporting this organization and uh, fundraising for them and doing all of this. She ended up winning a CNN Heroes Award in 2012 and um, got, a, got very famous for her work as a helper. Um, but I was always sort of like pushing up against in my work with her, I was always pushing up against wanting to be an organizer. So I started clubs and I started, you know, student organization and I did all these events and we organized all these different things. Um, and I, I really started to feel like 
you know, maybe the helper role is not the one that I'm supposed to be playing, but, um, but that, you know, what I want to be doing is working with people and trying to kind of um, get a lot of people together to, to take action. Um, the next kind of chapter, uh, and I'll go through these kind of quickly, but I, I then decided at some point that I was really into the rebel role and I started writing for Waging Nonviolence, which, you know, I was interviewing all of these activists who are doing civil disobedience and getting arrested. And I thought, you know, this is the coolest role. These people are so awesome. Like they're really on the front lines. This is what it means to be an activist. And in the top right hand corner, this is something called Ende Gelende, which is a big anti coal protest every year in Germany. And I was there in my suit and, you know, taking pictures and, and getting, you know, going in front of the police with these like smoke bombs and everything. Um, and, but, you know, I, I never also felt like this was really the role that fit for me, that it was something that I really admired other people doing. And it also didn't feel like it was the place that I was necessarily meant to be within the movement. And then the bottom left-hand corner, this is when I started at FCNL. Um, this is with Representative Barbara Lee, who's one of my champions. And, um, you know, I sort of learned how to do the advocate's role. And of course, that's a big piece of working at FCNL is figuring out how to be an effective advocate. Um, but I still had this tugging feeling that the thing I was really drawn towards was getting people together and, and figuring out ways to make other people feel their own sense of power when they take action together. Um, so that brings me to this last, the bottom right hand corner, um, which is a group of Bosnian teenagers. Um, and we were doing trainings about power building and organizing and how they could build their own campaigns in their communities where there's a lot of corruption and they have segregated schools and all these different things. Um, and that was a time that I really think of as kind of being in the right role where I was able to kind of bring the, the different skills or or things that I come into a movement with and, and finding ways um, to put those into practice in a way that felt really authentic, in a way that felt the most true to my own um, kind of gifts and purpose and everything like that.